Hello everybody! In this clip we look at products of Toric varieties, we discuss the Segre embedding and we discuss nodes. Given two Toric varieties, X T X naught and X prime T prime X naught prime, it is quite natural how to construct a Toric product variety. We take the product of X and X prime, the direct product of the tori T and T prime, and as a base point we take X naught, X naught prime. Then the product of tori T times T prime adds factor wise on X times X prime, and we have tori projection morphisms onto our vectors just given by in the first case projecting onto x, projecting onto t, and in the second case projecting onto x prime and projecting onto t prime. This product satisfies a universal property. Namely, given any two toric morphisms from a tor toric variety, y as y not, into our factors, we obtain a commutative diagram. Here are our morphisms into the factors, and above everything, there sits the product with its projections. And the universal property is that in this situation, we have a unique morphism, which is in our case a toric morphism, making this diagram commutative. So, this toric product is a product in a categorical sense. What is the picture on the side of fans? Also for lattice fans sigma n and sigma prime n prime, there is a natural way to define a product. We define sigma times sigma prime to be the set of all cones sigma times sigma prime where small sigma is a cone in capital sigma, small sigma prime is a cone in capital sigma prime. This is indeed a fan. It is a lattice fan in the lattice n times n prime, and we have the projection maps onto n, onto n prime. So also this product of lattice fans turns out to be a product in a categorical sense. Now our categories of toric varieties and lattice fans, they are equivalent. That means that in particular products on each side correspond to each other. In other words, if you have a product toric variety, then the fan of its convergent cones is the product of the fans of convergency cones of the factors. Let us see an example. Look at the product of the projective line with itself and we want to know what is the fan of this product. Here we have the fans of the projective line, just two maximal cones, the two rays. Here is the second factor and now we have to take the product fan, which in this situation means that we end up with a fan having the four quadrants at its maximal cones, so this is the fan of the product P1 times P1 as a toric variety. And we see how the projection maps look like. In particular, we directly see that they are maps of fans. Here's an example from classical algebraic geometry. The Segre embedding realizes P1 times P1 as a surface in the projective space P3. It is a monomial map. These monomials arise by regarding this one as a column vector and apply it to that one regarded as a row vector. The second embedding is a toric morphism. We need uh, a companion homomorphism of tori. It goes from T1 times T1 to the three torus and sends TS to S, T, TS. This works out. It is indeed a toric morphism. We turn to blow-ups. The blowing up of C2 and the origin is the following. It is a sub-variety of the product C2 times P1 and it is defined by this binomial equation. 
the blow-up inherits two maps from the projections here. One phi from the blow-up to P1, and the other pi from the blow-up to C2. What is the geometric intuition behind this? The plane C is the union of all lines through the origin. And the idea of the blow-up is to make this union of lines, they all intersect in the origin, make it into a disjoint union. And lines are separated according to their slopes. So, this is a blow-up. If we project to C, 2 down, we get back our lines. If we project on the factor P1, then we obtain the slopes of the lines. The blow-up of C2 at the origin is a toric variety. The two torus acts on the blow-up by T S dot X Y Z W is T X S Y T Z S W. Now if we take one one, one one as a base point, we have our toric variety. Let us compute the fan of convergence equations. That means we have to look at limits of one parameter subgroups. In our case, the one parameter subgroups go from C star into the two terms. That means uh, V is a vector with two components. And if we apply such lambda V of T to the base point, it looks explicitly as T to the V1, T to the V2, T to the V1, T to the V2. It turns out that there are six possible limit points. Maybe let us have a look at two of them. One is the case v1 greater than v2 greater than zero. The limit point is zero, 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 one. And the corresponding cone is this two-dimensional cone sigma. Another interesting case is that one. We have v1 equal v2 strictly bigger than 0, and the limit point is 0, 0, 1, 1. And this gives us a one-dimensional cone array, this row 3 over here. So we see that the fan of the blow-up of C2 at the origin arises from the fan of C2, which is just the fan of faces of the quadrant by inserting a new ray and subdividing the fan. See you in the next unit.